time i'd like to also recognize and if they would please stand up in order all our world war two veterans would you please stand up be recognized that are with us today thank you for your service gentlemen all our korean war veterans any here please stand up and be recognized Vietnam veterans, please stand up and be recognized and thank you and welcome home, brothers. And any and current serving Afghan Gulf War veterans, please stand and be recognized, if any. Again, thank you for your service to our country. At this time, I'd like to introduce post member Robert Perrone. Reading of the Gettysburg Address. Written on a napkin by Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground the brave men living and dead who struggle here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they <laughs> did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. Thank you, Robert. This time I'd like to introduce a member of our post, Jeff Weed, reading General Order 11. of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but hosts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades as our regulations tell us, for the purposes, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than cherishing tenderly the memory of those uh, of our heroic dead who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? their soldier lives for the revelry of freedom to the race in chains 
and their deaths of tat uh, a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should uh, guard their graves with sacred vigilance. Vigil. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of a nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, nor ravages of time testify to the present or the coming generations that we have forgotten as of equal the cost of free and undivided republic. In other, if other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold, and the solemn trust ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of light remains with us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise, rise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledge to aid and assist those who they have left among us a sacred charge upon the nation's gratitude for soldiers and sailors, widows and orphans. It is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while, survive, uh, while a survivor of war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press lend its friendly aid in bringing to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance herewith. The department commanders will use efforts to make this order effective by order of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Reading of our KIA names that we have at the base of our flagpole will be Tony Lindsay. Chief West will be ringing the bell.
Timothy J. Deneen. Thomas M. Scali. Loriano L. Lovato. Stanley R. Udy. Gerald R. Henry. Gary L. Holt. James D. Piper. Desert Storm. Gerald L. Thompson. Iraq. Joseph A. Graves. Michael C. Bosley. Kenneth M. Ballard. Travis J. Layfield. Rob G. Needham. Afghanistan. Nathan W. Cox. James F. Grissom. And to the unknown KIAs from our community. Thank you, Tony. At this time, I'd like to have our uh, World War II veterans from the VFW, Jake Dalton, Mickey Ganich, from the American Legion, John, John Zabrowski and David Lunch, please stand their post next to our wreaths. Normally we will move the wreaths, but there's a little, it's a little incidence with the wreaths. So gentlemen, would you please stay, take your place? This time we'll do taps and lowering of flag, honor guard. Please stand. <laughs> 